first thing I'd like to do is try to continue to keep all the prayers for Danny Farquhar going. Um, as much as we get it out through you guys, we appreciate it, the media, out to all our season ticket holders, our fans, and uh, generally just you know anybody that comes across it to continue to pray for Danny. Uh, he's making some progress, but uh, again, um, the, the thoughts and the prayers for him and his wife and, and their three children, their family. So uh, continue them uh, to come because uh, they're hearing them and they appreciate it. Um, outside of that, on Wednesday, we got you know a tough loss against Louisiana Tech. Our guys bounce back uh, one day you know, on Thursday, back to work on Friday. This weekend, I thought we did a real good job. Uh, you know, we, we pitchers, uh, the first two games through shutouts, um, uh, then two more scoreless innings into the third game. So we had almost 20 innings of scoreless baseball in a row. Uh, we played good defense. I think we turned seven double plays. Um, bottom line is we let the last game get away from us. We just didn't get the last out. Uh, and the game turned on us, and then they ended up overtaking us through extras. Um, you know, we got we got to continue to learn how to finish. When you get somebody down, we got to go ahead and finish finish the weekend. Um, so we, you know, that one got away from us, but uh, we 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 can't look backwards. We got you know another game at Tech tomorrow uh, on a road trip back here on Wednesday, and then catch a plane on Thursday and head out back to Atlanta. So. Uh, we got to manage what we got to manage in these two midweek games. Uh, hopefully, some of the arms that we throw can give us some quality innings. Uh, Louisiana Tech is still playing good. Um, uh, they, they've won their last five in a row, and I think they've scored 10 or more runs in all five of those games. So they're swinging the bat real well. Um, you know, I think beat Texas a couple days ago, so they'll, they'll be back in here on Wednesday, and then again to travel out on the weekend. So. We got to try to keep everything in balance the best that we can. The midweeks keep them balanced, no matter what happens, whether we win or lose. Um, like the weekend before, we were able to beat Magnese and uh, Southeastern, but yet still sweep over the weekend on the road. So we got to keep balanced the midweek with the road trips, and whether we win or lose, we got to be able to let that go and get ready for the weekend. Schmidt's been throwing very well. Hogan's back now in his second start and had a great start. Jack Burke pitched good enough to win. Uh, we did a lot of good things to be able to sweep this weekend. We just didn't get one out to close out that last game. So hopefully we can, you know, get better there and learn how to finish and uh, manage this week going into this weekend. But every weekend is going to be big now. Um, as Coach just said, you know, we, you, you're in the thick of things now. And uh, we just really, um, Nick has really stepped up great for uh, Stokey. Stokey, we might get him back this weekend. So. That'll be a big plus for us. We, we need him back to help us. Um, Lamont's been throwing very well for us. Uh, he's picked up some of the slack very well for us. In fact, he bypassed Nick for Saturday to where we could get to Nick for six outs on Sunday. We had it set up that way. We just couldn't get that last out. So uh, questions you might have. Have you heard from Danny's family directly and what's the latest update from you? No, we go through uh, Buddy Glass, which is a very close friend of Danny's and with their family. Uh, Danny's from the Florida area where, uh, I mean, Buddy's from nearby where Danny's from. They played together not only back home, but they played together here when they were here. So Buddy's given us good, pretty much current information. Uh, Dave just had something that came out from the White Sox, uh, um, I don't know, you said 15, 20 minutes ago, somewhere in there. So, uh, he, he, he's off the ventilator. He's breathing on his own. And uh, there's some good things that are happening right now, but he's not out of the woods. Uh, these next 24, 48 hours, I'm sure this next week is going to be very critical. But right now, there's a lot of indicators that are, that are good. So we need to just keep praying. Um, it's we're going to see they, they going to work out around three o'clock today or they're doing their work at three today and then we'll see and get it to Jeff. It's, it's either going to be probably Perrin or Williams, one of those two guys, just a matter which way we may want to do it. Does how Perrin fared against Louisiana Tech last time affect things one way or the other? Not really. What we're trying to decide is, you know, do we need him to maybe come back on Sunday to help us getting out of Georgia? Then it'd be better to put him on Tuesday. Wednesday it gives him only three days rest. Tuesday gives him four days rest. So that would be mainly the 
the big issue. We're kind of holding on to see how Stokey throws and see if we're going to pick him back up this weekend too. Is it, um, it seems like every year around this time of year you just have one or two or three arms down in a five-game week. Is it beneficial to have the five-game weeks this late in the season knowing that that all is going to happen? Well, I, I, don't, I, I just think that's, you know, the, the just you can't time injuries. Um, at the beginning of the year, we were just as injured. I mean, everybody's got arms going down left and right. Um, it just happens as part of baseball. It's why we, I think, need, you know, um, either extra men on the roster or the ability to move people onto the roster during the year. Um, so, you know, we didn't know we were going to lose Harris for six weeks. Uh, you know, we didn't know Stokey was going to pull a groin. If, if you do have them earlier in the year, you know, sometimes that can be better. But then, you know, we had lost Hogan early in the year and we lost four arms coming out of the fall. So um, you just never know. The, the, the premium on arms today is just so hard just because they're playing so much baseball and pitching so much underneath you before they get there. And, and sometimes you're at the risk of when another team can play you. Um, so I don't know if there's an exact model. Sometimes maybe playing them earlier. You know, you're trying to pitch more people, play more people uh, at that time of the year. But then, like I said, this year we came out of the shoot with some guys that some freshmen that, um, you know, ended up having some arm issues that we had to redshirt. So uh, I just think it's uh, you get into a rash sometimes with arms and um, sometimes you can get caught in the middle of the week with it in the five game week. It just it is what it is. You're going to have a five game week somewhere. Um, Hopefully you're healthy when you hit it. Um, the, the big key with this week, just like was the last, the, the, the Southeastern and the McNeese, is just one, you got to try to score some runs to protect that situation. And then number two, you got to hope that the guys you throw can give you just quality innings and not get run early. You know, winning and losing, you know, hey, you know, that, that's, that's one thing. But you hate to see a guy start and get chased in the second inning or a guy that's going to go in, he's going to get six to nine outs for you and he can't get out of the inning that he's in. That's, that's where it starts to put the biggest pressure on you. If these guys can just get out and get some innings in um, and manage the game, then, then I think we'll be okay. Um, one of them's on the road, so that's a tougher thing to manage. Uh, and one's at home. Sometimes you can... Sometimes you're a little bit more protected at home than you are on the road, but so I, I don't think it's uh it's something that you can time up. You just got to hope that when you grab that week, you're as healthy as you can be. Um, and right now we kind of a little thin, um, so we, it's just really the guys that are going to throw just need to give us just quality innings. I mean, it needs to change in those first four innings. Well, I, th I think, you know, Heron got his change up up on him a little bit early, um, whereas normally his change up is down. Um, he's more of a location guy, so he needs to stay set in in location to be effective. If he gets out of location, then he's not as effective. You know, a guy like Hogan Harris, who's throwing 93 to 94, he can miss a lane and probably still have enough stuff to get you out. But when you, you know, 86 to 87, um, you've got to stay in your lanes, and you've got to make sure you keep the ball down uh, when you're making that pitch. And I, I think um, they're good enough hitters to where if you get out of your lane, if you don't have enough stuff, you know, they can do some damage to you. And so I just think it's all he's got to do if he goes back out again tomorrow is just do the, the things that he did when he, was, when he pitched very well. He just kept his change up down, and he stayed in his lanes. Change now where the midweek ones are as, are as important because of where you're getting to RPI wise with the. Well, I mean, uh, you know, the, the the trouble you have with the RPI is is the days of developing is so tough because we used to use the midweek games to develop young players, but now you know you've got one game this week that's got a good RPI, one one game that might not have a great RPI. So, you know, you want to try to take care of your RPI, but you also don't want to try to take care of your RPI and risk what happens on the weekend. Um, 
that's just what you have to be careful of. I'll give you an example like Nick Lee. You know, you could force Nick Lee to pitch in the middle of the week this week, but then you really hurt yourself going into the weekend. So we're not going to throw him. Um, so it's not that we want to give up on one and put more emphasis on the other. Really, every year when we start the season, we always tell our pitchers, you know, sometimes the midweek games are just as important as the weekend due to RPI. But you also have to be realistic and and make sure you understand that, you know, a midweek game <clears throat> cannot give you a conference championship. Um, it, 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 the conference tournament championship has an automatic bid to the NCAA regionals. That, that's the one I think we want to stay focused on the most and not leave anything else to chance. So where we are right now is our goal is to just make sure we don't expend ourselves, especially the pitching staff, to get into the weekend and be short, short with arms. Because we're not a team that scores a lot of runs, you know, and so that's what we have to be careful with is that we have to pitch. You know, that night against Tech, we didn't pitch. Our uh, third baseman was sick. We're so much better defensively when he's on the field at third. You saw this weekend we turned seven double plays. He wasn't there, and then we didn't pitch well that night, and then we didn't hit. So that's a bad, you know, uh, mixture. So because we're not a team that scores a lot of runs, sometimes the premium on pitching is so high, but you also have to be careful because if you pitch too many of the frontline arms in the middle of the week, then I think it weakens you going into the weekend. Uh, Kenan Fontenot this year replay, started at least five different positions. Mm -hmm. Just how valuable is what he brings? To this? Well, you know, anytime somebody's movable, um, they're very valuable because, again, you have a 35-man roster. So when you got a guy that can play three to four positions or he's a dual guy, any of that, uh, that becomes very valuable because now your roster's – you know, you got 36 men, 37 men instead of 35. So he's been very valuable because we can move him around. You know, we can play him in the outfield. We can play him in the infield. Castles got spiked the other the other day in the game and got cut. But he was he was able to get, you know, taped up and fixed up to go back out there. If he goes down, then Fontenot now moves to second. So that's the greatest thing about having a dual guy like him and Joe Robbins and um, you know, Ryan Leonard's, those guys are very valuable on rosters. A lot of times guys can only play, you know, just in the infield or just in the outfield or on the left side of the field only or the right side of the field only. But what's good about Kennan is you can move him to the outfield and he can play the left side and the right side just like Ryan Leonard's could uh, and Joe Robbins could. Not many times, you know, all three of those guys were able to play the outfield and the infield. Not many times do you see that. You'll see a guy that can move around the infield or move around the outfield, but those three guys were very valuable because they could do both. Uh, Stover can play the outfield and first base, but he can't really play on the left side of the diamond, but he can play on the right side of the diamond in the outfield. So he gives you a little value there, <clears throat> but Kennan's been – real valuable to us because we can move him around. And uh, those guys are hard to find, you know. Um, when you can get a dual guy, it just helps you when you have a limited 35-man roster. What about Nick Lee has made him successful as a closer? A lot of people can't make that transition from player to closer. So what has he done well to, to adapt to that? Well, it is a tough role to do. The one good thing about Nick is Nick really has closer's mentality, uh, sometimes as a starter. Um, it might be even more difficult because he has closer mentality, he wants to come at you with everything. And I think that's why we weren't real fearful to move him over. He's not really a finesse guy or a guy that, you know, has to, has to uh, you know, not have that mentality. And I think that's why he's adjusted to it so well. He's done a phenomenal job for us. You know, we were one out away uh, the other night from him getting another save. And uh, he's, he's been very good as a closer and I just think it fits his MO, it fits his makeup and that's why I think he's been able to switch to it is because he already had that kind of mentality. Coach, how's McKinnon uh, been holding up physically behind the plate catching on the He's doing good. Uh, you know, he, he we, we during the week we kind of pull back on him and uh, we, we, we make sure that, you know, he's under the care of the strength coach and our trainer and making sure that he's getting ice baths and getting the things that he needs to, to for his legs. We've been very fortunate with the weather. We had another cool weekend this weekend. The turf was it was overcast, so it wasn't too bad because, 
you know, there's some things he can work through, you know, a bump and a bruise, but you get him caught up in a hundred degree weather and he starts to, you know, see in white spots or get dehydrated. There's not a lot you can do about that. You can't tell somebody to suck it up when they're being dehydrated. But so we're very fortunate. Our weather has been really good for him. Hopefully we can, you know, that, that stays that away. You'd like to get him out of a, uh, you know, a crummy game that we had in the middle of the week last week. You know, that's the, the toughest part is when you get either behind big or get just caught in a bad game, you, you, you'd like to get him out. But, you know, right now we'd have to burn the red shirt on another kid to do that. And we want to try to stop from having to do that if we don't have to do it. So he's been holding up good. He caught 18 innings in um, – you know, last week on the road, we had to move that game up at App State and did fine. The weather was good and cool up there, so it was good, good setting for him. And he's a, <clears throat> he's a, he's a strong-bodied kid, which is good. You know, some kids, I've had players before, they get dehydrated really quick or, you know, they, they sweat a lot. And, 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 and he's, he's got kind of the makeup to handle what he's having to handle, which is, which is good for us. Um, you know, next year with – handsome red shirt and him back and then Sebastian Toro and the red shirted kid that's going to be back um you know knock on wood we'll, we'll have catching depth um so so but Cole's handling good he caught a cutter the other day on his left hand that backed up and got him but other than that every every everything's been good he took a back swing a while back on his elbow uh, off from a hitter but bounced back good from that so so every, everything so far is has been good if he can just, you know, keep hanging on. What are some of the challenges of playing Georgia State this weekend after you lose three games? Well, it's just, it's just letting go the middle of the week and getting back on the weekend. All coaches go through it. You know, you got your midweek game. You either win and, and you can feel too good about yourself or you can lose and let it tailspin you. So either way, you have to manage the middle of the week. Um, so we did a good job of that last week. This week, the trip won't be as bad. You know, we're flying straight into somewhere, and we're very nearby the field. The other one, we had to bus. Um, and getting out of there was really difficult. Our, our flight, we spent 10 hours in that airport with them sleeping on the floor. And um, you catch 18 innings the day before and then sleep on the floor for six hours with your backpack for a pillow. That's not real conducive for your catcher. And um, so I think I think we got, we got really um, – a little bit of hangover coming back onto that into Wednesday. Um, this week, I think this this plane trip will be a lot easier, straight there and straight back. No, 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 a little over two hour bus ride to somewhere after we get there. But the biggest challenge really is us. You know, we let a game get away Sunday. Uh, we got to finish. One good thing is we've been <clears throat> we've been playing very well on the weekend. Uh, the last three weekends, we've had opportunities to sweep people. Um, we just need to stay consistent pitching and keep the score down, stay consistent defensively, um, and, and, and be able to score enough runs to just win a ball game. Um, and, and so the biggest challenge, I think, on us is just letting Tuesday and Wednesday go and being able to get up there and, um, and get back to work, uh, doing the things that we need to do on the weekend to be successful. Our pitching on the weekend has been very good. And uh, our defense has been good, and the hitters have swung the bat good enough to win. We had a sweep this weekend, you know. We just couldn't get that last out. So <clears throat> I think the big key is just getting off Tuesday and Wednesday and having a good trip up there and getting ready to go, you know, with pitching and defense and timely hitting.